Together, let's draw the Lewis structure and then use it to predict the molecular geometry of I3 minus. That's three iodines all connected with an extra electron for the minus one charge. Iodine is a non-metal. They will make covalent bonds with each other. Iodine brings seven valence electrons with it. So three iodines bring three sets of seven electrons each. And there's an extra electron for the fact that there's a minus one charge in this ion. That's 21 electrons plus one gives me 22 valence electrons to deal with total. Now, I3 is going to be three I's in a row, I, I, I. And now we need to fill this out with the 22 valence electrons. I like to start with my bonding electrons. I create a bond between each of the outer atoms and the central atom. That accounts for one, two, three, four electrons. Then I fill up the octet of my outer atoms. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's ensuring all the outer atoms have eight valence electrons. By the way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for that eye, that eye there. And then I dump extra electrons on the center atom. Now I already have 16 electrons here and I need 22. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. This is my Lewis structure for I3 minus. They all satisfy the octet rule. I mean, this one actually has an expanded octet, but the central atoms are most likely to do that. And for the final Lewis structure, if there's a charge, you usually put it in square brackets and show the charge in the top right corner. But you came here for the molecular geometry. The central atom here, which in Vesper notation is shown with an A, has two bonds to it, or rather two atoms that it is bonded to. That is X2. And then it has three lone pairs around it as well. That is E3. Now you may just know what the shape of that is. P.S. It is linear. But you can also think about it as coming from trigonal bipyramidal. There are five things around the center atom. Two bonds and three lone pairs. The farthest apart that five things can get in three dimensions is one above and one below that center atom, one sticking out to the side, one coming out at you, that's coming out of the page towards you, and one just behind that going into the page or away from you. These are 90 degree angles between each of the three things along the equatorial plane and the up-downs. Then between each of these is 120 degrees. The three lone pairs are going to take up this one and this one and this one, the three spots along the equatorial plane, so that by the time you're left with just the other iodines, you have to go above and you have to go below. And then by definition, these are 180 degrees away from each other. That's linear. That's why the molecular geometry or Vesper shape is linear for AX2E3. So to summarize, I3 minus is linear. Best of luck.